formed. I want now to、uh, spend a little time talking ここ about Mars. No sign of life there. He pushed rocks out of the way and dug under the rocks to see if we could find any microbes. No sign of life there as well. So we learned that a world in some way quite like the Earth, with an atmosphere, and seasons, and polar caps. いろいろな面で地球と似た環境なんです。しかし、それにもかかわらず、私たちの調べた限りでは、地球とは違って、いかなる生命体も見つかりませんでした。We discovered at least one of the reasons for this: it may be that Mars, that life never arose on Mars, and that's why we don't see life today. But even if life did arise on Mars, it is unlikely to have survived to the present time. And we mentioned the reason. The reason was that, unlike the Earth, which has a protective layer of ozone, Mars does not. Our ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet light from the sun. Mars has no ozone layer, and so ultraviolet light from the sun reaches the surface of Mars. Ultraviolet light is extremely dangerous for life on Earth. And so if life ever did arise on Mars, it could not, very likely, could not survive, at least in the upper layers of the Martian surface. Because of solar ultraviolet radiation. This is a picture. The great cratered plains of Mars. You can see some low lying hills here. This is an inhospitable looking part of Mars. Not only was there no sign of life on Mars, there was no sign of organic molecules, molecules based on carbon, molecules that you and I are made of, molecules essential for life. But on the other hand, when we send spacecraft into the outer solar system, We find a very different story. There, the giant planets on their moons, on the comets which come from that part of the solar system, we find organic matter almost everywhere. I'd like to give you just a little flavor, the briefest of tours of a few places of interest in the outer solar system. So, may I have the next slide, please? This is a montage of pictures taken by the Voyager spacecraft in the Saturn system. This is Saturn and its famous rings. This is one of its moons called Mimas. This is a moon I will show you in more detail in a moment called Enceladus. And this is the moon I will show you in more detail in a moment called Titan. Titan という衛星です。And Saturn, you can see a little spot of water on the slide just disappearing now. Saturn does not have that much water. It does, however, have some organic molecules in its clouds. The next slide is a close-up of. The horizon of Titan. You can see the orange clouds that cover Titan's surface. These clouds are made of complex organic molecules. These molecules are synthesized by solar radiation, by charged particles trapped in the magnetic field of Saturn. And those organic molecules are slowly, are slowly sedimenting through the atmosphere to the ground. 
Something like this must have happened in the early history of our planet and led to the build-up of the organic molecules that were responsible for the origin of life. So there is a strange sense in which if you want to understand how life on Earth came to be, go through those clouds and study the organic molecules that have accumulated on the surface of Titan. By the way, there is evidence, we're not sure, but there is evidence for an ocean of liquid hydrocarbons on the surface of Titan. May I have the next slide, please? This is a very recent picture, it's only a few weeks old, three of Neptune. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is approaching Neptune at the rate of about a, a million miles, uh, roughly one and a half million kilometers a day. These are three images of Neptune, and you can see there are strange, not that strange, strange spots um, of dark material in the clouds, and they are almost certainly made of organic molecules. We will determine that uh, much better around August 25th, when the Voyager spacecraft makes a very close encounter, only a few thousand kilometers from the cloud tops with Neptune. The next slide. is a picture of the Voyager spacecraft. This is the enormous antenna which broadcasts all its science findings back to Earth. This is a science boom on which are the cameras and spectrometers that acquire much of the data. The spacecraft is much too far from the sun to be powered by sunlight, and so it's, it is powered by the decay of plutonium. There is a nuclear power plant inside the spacecraft. And here, well, before I talk about that, this is a wonder of human technology. This spacecraft was designed in the early 1970s. It was launched in 1977. It far exceeded its design specifications. It was intended only to last until 1981, when the spacecraft encountered the Saturn system. Instead, when the spacecraft reached the planet Uranus in 1986, the spacecraft was working fine and sent us thousands of pictures and other data about Uranus and its rings and its moons. And now Voyager 2 is still working fine. And there's another aspect of it which may interest you. You can see a kind of golden circle on the side of the spacecraft. The next slide shows it in greater detail. Here it is. And what you are seeing is the cover of a phonograph And on this cover are instructions for how to play the record. What are we talking about? Who is to get this record? Well, the spacecraft, after it encounters Neptune next August, leaves our solar system and will then wander forever in the dark between the stars. Because interstellar space is a very gentle environment, there is very little erosion. And so this record and its contents within have an estimated lifetime of more than a billion years. So on this record are greetings in 60 human languages, including Japanese, although there is no prospect that extraterrestrials, no matter how smart, will know the human language. 
どんなに素敵であっても地球の言葉を一つでも知っているという可能性はあまりありません。